Yes, Connie and Tammy. Hi, ladies. Let's see how many can find me tonight. Anita. All right, we'll wait a couple more minutes. <laughs> oh my goodness. There's Ronnie. Whew. We're getting there. And Joanne, welcome. Hi, Patsy. Oh, it must have been raining all the way home, wasn't it, Patsy? Oh, Cindy, yay! Yes, Diane. Welcome, welcome, Pat. All right, we'll wait just a few more seconds, people. Thank you so much for your patience. Miss Carol. Yeah, we see you, Diane. Awesome. Okay, ladies, we'll get started. If people find me, wonderful. If not, they'll catch the replay tomorrow. So this is the host code for the month of April. We only have a few more days. If your order is less than $150, please um, use this hostess code. And then um, I am starting an uh, in-color club. I have three people who have signed up so far. You would pay $21 on the 5th of the month, and by the end of the month, you would get four sheets of cardstock, ink pad, refill, markers. Now, when I say markers, I mean these markers, the regular standard markers. The ink color ribbon, two yards, and then eight sheets of the matching designer series paper. So one month you would get fresh fiesta, another month you get polished pink, evergreen, so on and so on. That's for $21. If you'd like to add on the corresponding lens it's another nine dollars so it would be thirty dollars um, but i'm not charging any shipping and tax on these that's one of the perks plus you would get supplies you will have to use your paper a little bit of your supplies to make four cards one uh one design four cards of the same thing so if you're local, you can come here and make your cards on the third Thursday of the month, or you can pick up your kit with your supplies. The catalog has arrived, people. And I know people have kind of a mixed uh, mixed feeling, but I've been playing for the last couple of days. Oops, I'm not supposed to show you the inside yet. The last couple of days with some stuff, and I think some of it is you just got to get your hands on it and play with it. So tonight's class is a throwback. I bet I did this class, oh my goodness, I want to say six or seven years ago, because I was doing them, uh, I did them when I started doing a lot of craft fairs, because I sold a lot of these at craft fairs. So it's just a little simple handbag. I've made them in various styles, but this is the easiest one. And then I just use the same paper and make four quick cards. So I thought I would update it. I wish I could do a drum roll, but I can't. This is my update. Using that beautiful Forever Green Re paper. And after making, oh, probably hundreds of these... I have come up with a few tips and tricks, which I will share with you. I want to make one with, you know, my favorite black and white paper. So I'm going to do the cutting and scoring for the bag right here in front of you so you can see it. As you can see, I'm using that lovely True Love paper. 
And um, in case you don't know who I am, my name is Corrine Sandin. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Western Maine. Um, and I'm going to show you the start from start to finish on this. So you will need your cutter. I will put up the directions, you know, sometime tomorrow. Um, i got kind of a crazy day, so if it doesn't get there till Friday, it will get there. So this is a 12 by 12 piece of paper. To make your purse, now you got to be mindful of whatever you're putting in this purse. If you're going to put a pound of uh, needums or fudge or something like that, I think you probably should make it out of cardstock, not necessarily uh, the designer paper. So this needs to be 9 by 12. So I'm going to open my arm up and cut it at 9. Now I'm going to bring in my scoreboard just because I like it better. I think I can control my score marks easier. So on the 9 inch side, so I have 9 inches across here, this is designer paper so you don't have to press too hard and you want to use the thicker, I'm scoring this at 1 half inch, to me it's just easier to flip it over, one and a half inch again, whoops you got to be careful that you stay in the groove. Now, if your paper ever doesn't slide very good, just take a used dryer sheet. So now we're going to do one inch to make this different here. And then five and one quarter. Five and a quarter. Flip it around. So this is really not a lot, one inch, five and one quarter. That's it. There's not a lot to remember. Once you've made a few of them, you'll know it by heart. So the one inch piece here is going to get folded back, so it's the contrast. Let me grab a bone folder. Trying to keep this in the view and this in the view, but I can't, so. So the other end, I'm going to flip that as well. And then I'm going to start folding this into a box shape. I'm doing the edges, which is the side panel of my purse. So with this leftover piece, I am going to cut a couple of uh, three-quarter inch coordinating black uh, pieces for my handle. So I want two half inch pieces of my matching paper. So now I'm going to grab my Tombow. And I'm going to put these two pieces that are for my handle in the center. Now I can put it on either side. I'm going to have the flowered side up. Well, maybe I'm out of glue here. Let me try my other one. I only have 20 bottles, so I can go get another one if I need it. Yep, I guess we need a new bottle. Hold on a second, people. Oh, 
Okay. All right, let's try this new bottle. Well, for goodness sakes. Well, there it is. So let me grab, you know what I do when that happens? I just grab an old paintbrush. Spread that out as much as I can. And you can wash your paintbrush after because it's water soluble. Must be some air in here. Okay, so try to send you that. So the designer series paper is a half inch, and the uh, strapping is three quarters of an inch. Oop, moved a little bit. Cut that off. And let's do the other one. Yes, I'm going to miss this paper, but, you know, I got some of the new paper I've been playing with. It. Oh, it's just gorgeous. I have to say that that's probably my favorite thing about Stampin' Up! Is they do make gorgeous paper, and they do all the coordinating for us. Well, that's good to know, Diane. Somebody also said you can take a candle, a patsy, I think, uses a candle holder. Guess I have to go to the thrift store. Okay. So, the other thing is that you want to do is you want to curl these just a little bit. Uh, okay, so now we're going to do just a little bit of cutting. So, where these, it's hard to see on the black and white, you're going to cut the center tab. Right to where it meets. I know it's hard to see. Then you need to decide which one is going to be your front post. I just take another scrap of black and I run it through an old punch. We all have some... Um, you know, like border punches. If not, you probably have a die. Let me see if I gotta cut this. Nope, it looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of glue. Cut this up to the fold. Since this is one inch, I cut this at one and a quarter, just in case anybody's wondering. I've come a long ways in making these. This was back in the day when I kept everything simple. So this will be the front of my purse. Now, the other thing that I've done over the years is I have gone back to, you can buy these brads in the paper, or probably you have some old ones in your stash, I bet. Because we all have stash, right? Yes, Patsy said she does use a candle holder. So I want to make sure that I can get my handles on even. So what I do I like simple. You guys know that. I just take a little ruler. I go in one inch. And I put a mark right here. 
I made it dark so you can see it. So I'm lining this up with the fold and I'm making a mark right here. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So this is so I can line them up. I can't see this one very good. All right, so now we can line up our handles. So you need to decide if you want them in or, uh, you know, on the outside or the inside of your dog. They're going to go like this. I think I'm going to move them to the outside. So I'm going to put just a dab because I am going to put some. So I'm going to make sure that my corner of my strap is touching that right there. I'm just going to hold that there for 10 or 15 seconds. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I would suggest that you use the wet glue versus your adhesive because we're going to be punching this before we put it together. Okay, so you do the same thing on the other side so that they match. Hold it down for a minute and then take your other strap and you're going to do the same thing. Just repeat yourself. At our age, we're good at that, right? Repeating ourselves. Okay, so now I'm holding it here. Holding it down just for a quick second, making sure that adheres. I like to put my brads on before I make up my box. So let me get some out. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I gotta hold this down just for a second. It takes a minute to catch. So how is everybody today? Did you have a good day? I know uh, Patsy got to stamp with some friends. My thumb is, I can bend it very, very slightly, but the pain is a lot better. That's the most important thing. Thank you for asking. Okay, so I'm just taking a regular small handheld punch. I'm going to punch these. And then put my brads in. And that will help keep it in place till it dries really well. Alright, let's see if I can get this one inside punched. Without using my thumb. You don't realize how much you use your thumb, like opening jars and stuff. It's amazing. Thank goodness it's only one. Okay, so those are on. Now, the next step is optional too. You might want to put a little piece of reinforcement here. So I usually just take another piece. Is that leftover? You know, some leftover paper. It's about two inches. I just like to double it up so that if I'm uh, going to put like a piece of candy or something in it. 
So I make it about one and a half by six. Just a hair shy of six. So for those of you that don't like fractions, like 15 sixteenths. So I'm going to glue that right in here at the bottom of what would be the bottom of my purse. It just reinforces the bottom a little bit. So, like, I like to make little nugget purses to put in this with the cards. You know, chocolate and cards just go together, right? Okay. So, that's it. We're about ready to make our purse. So, I'm funny about some things. I want the front of my purse to be nice and smooth. So, I'm going to wrap this side around to the back. So that's why I said it's kind of important that you know where your front is. I just like that finished look. So, because I'm going to do that, I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm putting a little bit of glue on my tab. And attaching it to what I consider the back of the purse. Just holding it there for a minute. I agree. Chocolate goes with everything. So again, to the back of the purse. Just hold it there for about 10 seconds. You might have to re-score this where you folded it and added that extra. So now I'm going to put some of this wet glue. Now at this point, if you want to use your stamp and seal or your heavy duty tape, you certainly can do that. This just gets wrapped around and it lines up perfect with that seam. Takes a few seconds to dry, so don't rush it. So we're going to do the same thing over here. Just hold it there for a minute. I love black and white anyways. You guys should know that by now. Okay, so let's make a cute little tag. I thought I had a piece of black. Let me make a little hanging tag. So I'm going to cut a piece of black that's about two inches by four-ish. You like that measurement, huh? Two inches by four-ish. And grab one of your tag punches if you have one. I have a ton. If you don't, uh, probably one of your dies you might have one. I'm just going to stick that in. And I'm going to use some daisies because I have a stockpile of them already. I don't know if I have any little ones in here. Oh, but that's okay. I'm going to take a couple of daisies. Some pop-ups, dimensionals. Stagger my daisies. Put a black center using a tiny punch. Look in your stash what you have. Or maybe you might have a bling or 
something that you want to put on it. Did I grab the wrong one? Oh, for goodness sakes. I guess you know I'm going to get a candlestick or something tomorrow. All right, so then I'm going to put that on my black tag. While that dries, before I try hanging it up, I did start the cards already. So you should have two sheets of cardstock, uh, not cardstock, excuse me, design a series paper that matches so that you can make your cards to coordinate. So what I do is I just cut four pieces that are four inches by five and a quarter. I glue one on straight like that, and then I cut like a half, one and a half inches on the other one. And then the next one that I'm going to make with you guys is I cut it long ways this time. My goodness, me and my glue tonight, huh? Well, let's use some tape runner here. You guys don't want to be here till midnight watching the glue come out. So if you don't have a demonstrator and you would like a catalog, let me know. If you're local, you can pick it up. If not, I will be more than happy to mail one to you. Okay, so there's card number three. Card number four, this time I'm just going to flip it over. So I don't make them fancy, as you can tell, for these kind of projects. And for those of you that hope to do craft fairs again, I used to sell them for $15. Because the, the cards themselves are pretty simple. So, as you know, this is my famous binder. I think most of you have adapted my idea. So let me find some tags I can put on. Oh, here's a good one. Oh, that's a Christmas one. I guess it's a little early for that. Okay, so let's see what else we have. Oh, wishing I could heal your heart. I could go inside or outside. And let's see what else we have. A little birthday surprise that would be a good one and thank you very much okay so it looks like I got four so I'm gonna take some dimensionals Oh, what's the conversation going on? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take a daisy or two. Let's see what else I got in my stash here. Oh, I got some leaves. All right, so for this one, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I think you guys have seen me do this, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to cut my daisy in half. Like that. And 
then we can put some blings. Keep it simple. So I'll stick this inside. So there, card number one's done. Let's put some glue these puppies together. And then put a couple of pop ups. my greeting below and what else do I have here for some blings oh I think I just punch out another little circle keep it all matching huh Now you can see the cards do not need to be fancy and you want to be careful how much you layer them because by the time you get your envelopes in there there's not much room and i i like to make them white so that they can write their own personal message inside So oh, simple, simple, simple. So this one, I'm going to really rack it up a little bit. Let me see how big the little happy birthday for you. Let's put that up there and then grab a couple more daisies. I do everything. Whenever I have to punch something or cut something, Oh, I want some pop-ups. I always do five or six more. So that when I want to make cards like this. I have everything ready. Let me put this on. I could use glue dots too. This is the leaf from the fine arts. That little pop of color is kind of nice against the black and white. And another pop of color. There it is. So please hit the share button. Everybody that hits the share button, I will. My, uh, my mailing things back to work and I had a problem. I'd wait for part. It came today. I will select four people and mail one of these cards. I can't mail the purse because it would get crushed. So I will select everybody that hits the share button. Up to four people. I will send the cards. Here's the purse. Oh, where's my little tag I made? Probably threw it out of the way here someplace. This is the front. What happened to my little tag? Let's see if I can find the tag because I like to hang it from here. But I'll bring in the other one. What happens when I get to stamping like this, my desk gets to be such a mess. And here's the other one. And I'll show you those cards. I did a jazz them up just a little bit. Like I said, I had a whole bunch of these from another project. 
These, all these tags were in my binder. So there, you can see them. And this one will have the same little tag as this with the big daisies. So that's the class tonight. Next week, I, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce you to the new colors. The projects I make will be with the new ink colors that will become available on May 5th. So Monday night will be simple stamping. Uh, Wednesday night is uh, technique and fun fold, I think, if I remember right. So until then, take care of yourselves. Have a great evening, nice weekend, and I'll see you next week. And if you want to see something special, like I said, just leave it in the comments or text me or whatever, and I'll be happy to uh, put it into the schedule. I do work a couple of weeks ahead of time just in case something comes up. I'm, I'm prepared. Um, so that's it. Okay, folks. Bye-bye now. Take care of yourselves, and thank you.